everybody, Arderimus here. Uh, in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a simple trigger scripting engine um, that will allow us to pass a specially formatted string into our game from uh, an outside source. We, we, what we'll be doing is populating a tile value with that string and then parsing it inside of our application. I'm going to be taking off from my last video which was uh, on saving and loading map data so uh, I'll be using the source code from that. I will provide a link to the download as well so everybody can be up to speed. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Now what we're going to want to do is, in your Solution Explorer, um, browse down to your World folder and um, open the World Screen class that we have created in the past. And this is where most of uh, this is going to go, so uh, you're not limited to using this class. Uh, it might not even be a bad idea to create a trigger handler class if, if that's the way you want to go. Uh, just to keep things uh, straightforward and simple, I'm going to be creating the scripting, the trigger engine in this class. So uh, I'm going to start in the head here and I'm going to add a variable for tracking whether or not a trigger has been activated on the map. Uh, because as the game updates, we don't want it to uh, fire the trigger multiple times. So I'm going to start with uh, a trigger processing variable. And I am going to call it trigger activated. So I'm going to say private trigger activated. And this is just going to be a Boolean value, so I'm going to say as Boolean. And we're going to just set it to false by default. Okay. And then as we step on a triggered tile, uh, we'll set that to true uh, to activate it. So <clears throat> once we do that, we can uh, go down and begin creating a sub for our trigger trigger handler. All right, so let's see. This sub is going to be called process trigger. And again, you could uh, stuff this in a, in a class of its own if you wanted, or even create a, a, a child class from this one. Um, so we'll say public sub process trigger and <clears throat> the only parameter we need here is uh, the trigger script as a string and where this will be coming from is our tile class and you'll populate this uh, property uh, via a um, map editor or something like that. Or you can do it manually if uh, you prefer to. It doesn't really matter how it gets there. Uh, it just matters that uh, our trigger is there. So uh, coming back here, what we're going to do as soon as this uh, um, is fired is we're going to set the trigger activated to true. So I'm going to say trigger activated equals true. And that will prevent it uh, in our update sub from uh, activating multiple times. Uh, then we are going to use a couple of, uh, actually a few different variables here uh, inside the class. I'm just going to say dim. Uh, trigger action as a string and since we're just going to have one string with all of our commands uh, we're going to need to split that string up so what we'll do is say equals split 
and the string we want to split is uh, trigger script. And it doesn't really matter uh, what escape characters you use for yours. Uh, in my case, I'm going to just be using the bar and uh, probably a colon sign as well. So I'm going to say split at every instance of this symbol. And uh, the trigger action is going to be essentially the first parameter of that string, the first uh, part of that string that it finds. So that will be the index of 0. And then um, we're going to add the trigger value. Try to keep these as logical as possible so they make sense to us. Um, also as a string. And this is going to be the second value that it finds in that split string. So let's say trigger script. And again, we're going to use that bar there. <clears throat> and we're going to grab the second instance, which is an index of 1, since it's 0 based. Um, so what I'm going for is, you know, just to kind of give you a visual of what the string might look like, I'm going to put a comment here. So we're going to have a command, for example, load map. Um, that will be the action. And then we're going to use the bar as a separator from the value. Uh, so we could say load map, uh, what map? I want to load the world map for example. And if we left it at that and didn't supply any additional parameters, uh, it would just load the world map with its uh, default start location. But we might want to override the default start location. You know, say, what if you have a, you know, a staircase that uh, takes you to a specific place in your world map rather than the default start location. Well, you might want to be able to override that. So we might pass in uh, a third value, uh, which could be coordinates on your map that you want it to teleport you to. In this tutorial, I'll be using a portal tile uh, to teleport us around, or um, uh, for map loading, it could just be you know walking out of a town or something like that, taking us to a certain spot on that map. Uh, next to the town. So I could supply a coordinate like uh, 3221, for example. So because this final parameter is conditional, we're going to have to you know, handle it a little differently. But for now, we'll uh, go ahead and add these values. Uh, I'm going to add one final uh, variable to take care of the trigger parameters. So I'm just going to call it trigger params as a string. And this one's just going to be blank by default. Okay. We don't want it to be a null value. We're just going to pass it a, an empty string. And that would handle the parameters. So think of it as action, value, and parameters. <coughs> So what we will say now is if split trigger script at um, the bar, I think that's what that's called, I'm not 100% certain, dot count is greater than 2, then trigger params is going to equal split trigger script at the bar. And we're going to take the third value from that split string. Whoops. 
Except for we got to remember it's zero based, so three isn't actually the third, two is. So this just tells us, uh, gives us a condition to say, hey, if there is a parameter in that third position, then process it. Otherwise, just ignore the fact that it's not there. Okay? That's fairly simple.